Recently we've been talking about adding detail into our stories. Oftentimes writers will tell the reader something, thus creating just a still image in their, in their mind. But when they could show their reader what they're talking about and create that, that video that we are looking for as writers. Readers want to listen to a story that is going to engage them and make them visualize what's going on. So there's a few strategies that we can, we're going to talk about today to help you with that. One strategy that we, we can talk about is showing dialogue. Another strategy is showing character actions. Five senses is another way. And the final that we're going to talk about today is using figurative language, where you would use a simile or a metaphor to help your, help your cause. So as we move along, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to imagine and just listen to what I read. Imagine if this is a still image or if this is an actual video happening in your mind. Can you see what's happening? Maria began getting scared as she reached the top. In this short sentence here, the author is telling you and just giving you information. They tell you that she is scared. They do not create that image in your mind and that visual visualization that you're looking for. Now open those eyes and think about what you would like to see from a piece of writing that will help you really see how she's scared. In this next version, I'd like you to think about now what I'm saying and see if you can visualize what Maria is going through. Maria could hear the fading screams of those in the cars in front of her. She gripped the bar as her car tilted backward. The menacing click click of her car slowed as they reached the top and her stomach went scrambling up into her throat. Now that right there should give you an image of a young lady sitting on a roller coaster about to go down this steep roller coaster and really, you can really feel how she is scared here by the faint sounds in the background by her actions that she did and through this you should really um, involve your readers make them part of the story make them have to do a little work and not just tell them everything they need to know so this next statement that I'm going to read to you is a telling statement and then after this I'm going to show you four different ways in which the author could have said this differently to increase the showing rather than the telling. Talia was angry when she got her test back and saw that it had an, she had gotten an F. This sentence tells the reader how Talia felt. This seems kind of boring. Why tell someone when you can show them? This example is going to be showing through dialogue. This will, when you have dialogue, you need at least two characters in order to have a conversation back and forth. I can't believe it. I studied all night for this test. Mrs. Jackson, that's not fair. Now there's no need to get upset, Talia, Mrs. Jackson said calmly. We can go over what you missed, then you can do an extra credit assignment to bring up your grade. Now this is really giving you a visual of how Talia is actually feeling about this grade and the conversation that took place between her and her teacher, Mrs. Jackson. This is going to be showing through character actions. Character actions are actually some things that you could actually act out if, if it n indeed needed to be. So these will be actions and you'll see a lot of uh, verb usage in this next example. Mrs. Jackson placed Talia's test upside down on her desk. Talia picked it up and her eyes opened wide. Her ears turned bright red. She crumbled up the paper. In disbelief, she smoothed out the crumpled test to check the score once again and scowled. Now this really creates an image of the action that went down with Talia and her teacher and what she actually did. This next one is going to be using the five senses. The sense of hearing, sight, smell, taste, and touch. 
Now in your writing, you don't have to use all five in order to create a decent showing piece, but at least use one or two and really go with them. And when you use your five senses, you'll often hear uh, descriptive words, such as which are also known as adjectives, to assist this. Talia felt her face flush and her ears go red hot when she was she saw the grade at the top of her paper. Her hands curled around the paper and it crackled as she crumpled into a ball. Through gritted teeth and with a hiss, she asked Mrs. Jackson about her test score. Now this example you can really feel the senses happening here. You can see that she felt her face go flush. Her ears went red. You can see how the redness is happening. Her touch, she curled her hand around the paper and then she crumpled it. Through gritted teeth, when you have gritted teeth you often hear a sound or you can see that happening and with a hiss she asked Mrs. Jackson about our test score. So this example really uses the five cents as well. And the last example is showing through figurative language where you'll use a simile and a simile uses a word a comparison of two different things and they use the word like or as. Or it could be a metaphor where you just simply state something is. For example, a simile might be life is like a journey. A metaphor would be life is a journey. Talia couldn't believe what she saw the F screaming at her from the top of her test. It was like spending an hour at the grocery store, checking everything off your list as you added it to the cart, getting to the cashier, and realizing you'd left your wallet at home. All that time and effort studying for this test was wasted. Now in this example, we really can see one good example of simile. And the way we can tell that is this word right here, like, the author is comparing Talia's uh, disbelief and and her all her effort of studying to the effort you would put in at a grocery store and spending an hour at a grocery store getting all the things off your list and into the cart then get to the cashier and then you realize you left your wallet at home leaving the wallet at home is really like all her studying was time wasted so when you're writing at home, you're writing in class, and you notice that you use a telling statement which might tell how somebody felt or might tell what somebody did. Think about how you could show using one of these four strategies. Now if you're struggling with this telling, these examples here are all telling stamp statements that you can practice with. And when you need to, Pull out one of these statements and pick a strategy and see how you can improve this statement here.